Hello and welcome to another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the show where we dissect the wacky conspiracy theories of one man. And for today, I'm not going to tell you his name. I'm going to keep you guessing. Here are some clues about who we might be doing today's episode about. He's a world-renowned expert in EMF technologies. He holds nine world patents in EMF technology, and he's been fighting for freedom for a number of years. It's actually quite a difficult thing to guess because every single bit of information Charlie gives about the next speaker is completely wrong. Can I please ask you to give a huge welcome to Mark Steele. Thanks, Charlie. It was Mark Steele all along. Did you guess that? What you're looking at is the beginning of an event called The Lion Sleeps No More. It was a public speaking event hosted by Charlie Linton featuring Mark Steele and it took place on the streets of Newcastle, which is very close to where Mark Steele lives in the town of Gateshead. But the amazing thing about this speech and the event as a whole wasn't so much what they said or who was there but how different it was from an event that Mark Steele co-hosted three years ago. This was an event at Trafalgar Square. It featured thousands of people with hand-drawn placards. And uh, judging by the looks of Mark's latest escapade, there was barely 15 people there. Well, what it's like on Northumberland Street today We've checked the radiation levels, are pretty catastrophic. Illegal, illegal spying technology. What they call cameras for your safety, they're not for your safety. These are multi photon ionizing radiation emitters. You're it's really tragic how far Mark has fallen. There was a time when he was known as a somewhat original conspiracy theorist. He was the guy who believed that lamp posts were full of 5G death rays and they were going to kill us all. And, and that was something I think we could all relate to. I think everybody understood what a lamp post was and we could all imagine how nasty it would be if the lamp posts, those things that were supposed to guide us through the night, well imagine if they turned against us. It, it's like a some kind of Hollywood horror film nightmare. But what's all this business with multi-photon ionizing radiation emitters. It, nobody can relate to this stuff. It's not a good horror plot. You see that lovely black box down there? Hanging on the end of that pool with all those lovely cameras spying on you? That's to track anybody who took the biotech weapon. It wasn't a vaccine. Matt I think the reason why Mark Steele's conspiracy theories have become so unrelatable is that they've grown in complexity. There's a 5G vaccine that contains an invisible microchip that works in tandem with the ULEZ cameras, which are actually multi-photon. And you see, nobody has the mental bandwidth to remember all that stuff. Least of all the conspiracy truthers who can barely compose one thought with another. It, it's just too complicated. This would not even work as an M. Night Shyamalan movie. It makes no sense at all. Mark, you need to cut this down. You need to simplify. Get back to basics. Come up with some good conspiracies. The technology that rolling out, deploying on top of you, is for one reason only, to imprison you in a 15-minute prison so they can carry out the extermination. Mark is talking about the idea of a 15-minute city. That's a proposal, it's a scheme to make cities more livable by bringing the things we need within 15 minutes walking distance of where we live. And the idea is if everything is nearby, we won't have to drive so much. But it's a, a comic misunderstanding. Mark thinks that the 15-minute city means that people will be prevented from moving more than 15 minutes from their home. It's a, it's a really bizarre way of twisting what seems like a, a, a sensible idea that will help a lot of people. 
low emission zone. They're coming for your cars. They're coming for your transport. They're coming for your food. 2030, go and look into it. Go and look into it. No holidays. This is classic attention-seeking behaviour. Mark is threatening the people of Newcastle with all the things that he says they can't have. They won't have a car. They won't have food. And they won't have a freedom. And most importantly, they won't be able to take that Hove Seasons holiday to Marbella because it's all going to be banned by Gateshead Council or somebody. He, he's never entirely clear. He thinks the ULEs and the 15-minute cities are weird kind of death sentences. For, for everyone else who's actually bothered to read what they are, it just means moving the things you need closer to where you live. Mark is an angry man, not sure what he's actually angry about. And your local authorities being weaponized against you to increase your tax, to shut down your transport, to put you in an electric car that will sterilize your children. In Mark Steele's conspiracy universe, there seems to be rather a lot of things that are going to kill us. Is it the lampposts with 415 nanometer blue light? Perhaps the 5G phone network? Vaccines, maybe? Or perhaps the COVID virus, which may or may not exist, depending on what day you ask Mark. It could also be Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, Boris Johnson, despite the fact that he's no longer Prime Minister, perhaps he's also an agent of death as well. There are so many ways that we are all going to die. But the strange thing is that day follows night and night follows day, and we wake up in the morning, and the world is much the same as it was the day before. None of the things that Mark Steele has ever claimed are going to happen have ever happened. When will Mark Steele actually notice this? He's too busy shouting to, to notice that none of the things he ever says ever come true. The 2030 World Economic Forum plan, it's a globalist plan to depopulate the whole point of immigration. All this mass migration is to cover up because of the indigenous population. The numbers are collapsing. This is just a weird racist rant that could have come from the 1980s. Mark is like one of those bands from years ago that have stopped doing anything creative and just play their greatest hits. Welcome to Britain's Conspiracy Theory Chart Countdown. It's the biggest chart for the wackiest conspiracy theories going through the mind of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. At 10, electric cars gonna fry your balls. 5G lampposts down to number nine. It's a kill grid at number eight. At number seven, we have deadly biotech weapons. And at number six, the World Economic Forum's Klaus Schwab. At number five, it's the urban prison, the 15-minute city. Number four, the white nationalists. They're taking our jobs. Falling to number three, it's the 5G vaccine chip. And at two, don't call it a camera, it's the ULEZ. Which means holding for another week at number one, it's chemtrails. Lock up, say the chemtrails. It's not difficult, you've got two eyes. Anyway, I think I've said enough. Thanks, everybody. Mark, you really have said enough. Today has been an absolute embarrassment. One of your worst conspiracy performances. You barely held the attention of maybe the 15 or so people that you came with. And you could even see them just dawdling around in the background, not paying attention. That was a pathetic speech. You were rambling. You were incoherent at times, shouty, insane. It was non sequitur after non sequitur, and really nothing made sense. This was perhaps one of Mark's very worst performances, the, the nadir of his life. I'd, I'd like to think that from this point onwards, things can only get better, but I know what's actually going to happen. Mark's decline will only get worse. He will sink into greater wretchedness, and we will be there to watch him. I don't know if that's a good thing anymore, but um, go on, Mark. Give it one more chance. Let's hope that your trip to Newcastle 
wasn't wasted. Yeah. I've just had a chat with uh, Amnesty International about their uh, attempt to stop the death penalty. I explained to the chap that a killing 400 plus a day in the UK didn't get it, of course, so I had to get my meter out to show them radiation will kill you. And I'm sure those charity workers were equally impressed as we were when Mark waved his meter in the world and declared that we would all shortly be dead. What a bizarre and disappointing episode of Mind of Steel today has been. We thought we were going to see an exciting speech from an inventor, and what we saw was an incoherent ramble by a man seemingly crazed on his own decline. We've learnt that Mark seems to embrace just about every single conspiracy theory there is, and fails to distinguish between any of them at all, in a speech that joins them all together in a way that is so rambling, so incoherent, and so confusing, as nobody, not even his friends, could possibly understand a word he was saying. And we've seen a man who once was able to fixate a crowd of thousands in London's most public of squares, fail to even attract the attention of his closest friends as they allow him to shout and ramble away like a confused old man, which he so clearly is. I hope that next week's episode of Mind of Steel will be something a little bit more cheerful. Perhaps Sabrina again. She was wonderful, wasn't she? She says so many interesting things. Mark, you could learn from her. Or, or what about Andy Osborne? He's an absolutely hilarious character. Mark, you just need to have some of Andy's panache, some of his charisma. <sighs> I hope Mark will improve his act, because this is going to be a very short and, dare I say, dismal series. And who would tune into another episode of Mind of Steel like this?